Hi there, welcome to Chemistry 3007, Approximate Wave Functions at the University of Western Australia. In the last lecture we talked about the Hartree product wave function and I mentioned that it was wrong because it doesn't incorporate this idea of anti-symmetry, the Pauli principle. The wave function must reverse sign when we reverse the when we swap the coordinates of any two electrons. Electrons are fermions, so this must happen. But the Hartree product isn't like that. If we swap uh, coordinates 1 and 2 in the product, it doesn't necessarily equal the same function. So, uh, Fock realized that he could make he could make the Hartree product uh, obey this anti-symmetrizing principle, this, this reversal principle, the Pauli principle, by using something called an anti-symmetrizer. So we have an anti-symmetrized product of orbitals. What is the anti-symmetrizer? Well, the anti-symmetrizer sums all possible permutations of these coordinates not the orbitals, these coordinates of the orbitals. The orbital indices remain the same, it's just permuting the coordinates. And every time we permute a pair of coordinates, we add either a plus or minus sign to that product and add it to the original product. So if we do one swap, we have a minus sign. Two swaps means an even sign. Three swaps, an odd sign. If we add all of the possible permutations together like that, we get, by construction, a wave function that obeys the Pauli principle. It's anti-symmetric. Um, so that's what this anti-symmetrizer does, and it also includes a normalization factor, one on the square root of n factorial, because there are n factorial terms in the wave function. There are n factorial possible swaps you can do. Okay. Let's look and see what that looks like for a three electron product wave function. So here's the product wave function of Hartree, phi 1, x1, phi 2, x2, phi 3, x3. What do we do now? Well, we can swap the coordinates of electrons 2 and 3. So that becomes phi 2 of x3 and phi 3 of x2, but we've got to add a minus sign. Then we can swap 1 and 2, phi 1 of x2, phi 2 of x1, a minus sign. Now, we can swap electrons, uh, we can do two swaps now, we can swap from this, uh, from this second term, we can now swap coordinates 1 and 3, so that becomes phi 2, 3, phi 3, x1, but now we have to do a double minus sign, so that becomes a plus. Now there's only two other permutations, the number of permutations of three objects is six, three factorial, and you can check that these are the only three that are there. And uh, this is for normalization. You can see that if you integrate this wave function with itself, you will get, assuming all these orbitals are orthonormal, assuming they're orthonormal, uh, which is, we'll see why that makes life a lot easier. Assuming they're all orthonormal, we would get the number six coming out so we would have to divide by square root of 6 to make the whole wave function normalized. So, uh, now this quantity here can be written as a determinant, but I'm not going to do that. It's more easy for you to understand it in terms of permutations. The determinant idea was coming from Slater. Not much of an idea if you ask me, but there you go. Um, Fox anti-symmetric determinant wave function explained to you. See you later.